We live in a day and age today in the ministry where we got big fat cat preachers, limousines, yachts, airplanes, multi-million dollars. We got mega churches out there. We got ministries. I talked to a guy yesterday. You know they're phony. You know they're wicked. And talking about a church, a local congregation. And I've heard many things. We got a great preacher. We got a great church. We got a great program. This message is, are you really great? Who does your greatness come from? Who will come from God? This video is to show maybe it didn't. Now, I'm not saying it did. I'm not saying it didn't. I'm going to show you the other side. Because there are churches out there, they're involved in paganism, Eastern Christmas. You can't sit at the Lord's table and you can't sit at the devil's table. You got churches that all are welcome. That's not the biblical definition of the church. There's some believe that the building is the church. That's not the church is the people. I've been in a church where, you know, if you take care of the grass, God will give you rewards. Chapter and verse, please. And the thing is, look how big we are. Yeah? The White House is big. The Vatican's big. What's the difference? The Grand Canyon's big. The greatness is that that's the judge, you know, God's blessing us. That's what they thought in the Old Testament. And we're in that point in the church. Today, churches, Sunday school, they count heads. They count how many people are, are in assembly. How many people came to a fellowship. That's primary. So the pastor can go to his association. He can go to his council. He can go to his pastor's fellowship. He can go to whatever group of pastors he's going to. And he can have his bragging rights. Over another pastor in his church. Don't fool me. I, 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 I've been trained. My seminary courses, my institute courses, had courses to teach me what these churches are up to. So Genesis 11, 3 and 4. I've got quite a bit of verses to go through. Here's a building program. And they said one to another, group of people. Go to, let us make brick, burn them thoroughly, and they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. And we know the story. Let us make a name. We're the Baptist Church. We're the Congregational Church. We're the Catholic Church. We're the non-denominational church. Look at our steeple. And a pastor told me, our steeple will point your way to the church. One of my ministries, I sit outside of a church once a week and hold a gospel sign. And sometimes I preach on the street. I've talked to several people. And I point to the church and they turn around. Oh, I didn't know there was a church here. Wow. You're doing a good job. Inside, we're great, we're going to great. And the people they don't, they don't even know who you are. The steeple didn't point to nothing. At least we'd be scattered upon the face of the whole earth. So here's a building program. We're going to get to heaven. We're going to reach God. We got the building materials. We got the people. We got the labor. We got the cash or whatever they use. Just like a church building program. You know, some churches after the building program, when they build that church, you know they fail. They close up. They foreclose or, or, or default on their mortgage. They get a church split. This is what happened here. God came down, the Lord came down to see the city. Well, let me take a look. God was not in this building. And God dispersed the people. We know the story. 
God may have a church split. Oh, oh, we lost people, we lost money, we lost funds. You may have a building program without God and God comes down. You know what? I'll, I'll split you. You read John 6, 66, church split, with Jesus. Many disciples turned away and we went another direction from him. So don't say, okay, we built a church building, we, we got the cafe, we got the coffee, we got... Uh, I mean, I went to one church, and the, the pastor is boring as anything. I walked into his, his new church before we left... Connecticut comes to Florida. And it's like a mausoleum. Marble. And, you know, if you go over there, they'll take your coffee order. and You can you can sit over here to after Sunday school. Well, in other words, you don't have to go to Sunday school. You can have a cup of coffee. There are church building programs, past, present, and future. God's not in it. But you got the building materials, you got the money, you got the wood, you got the labor, and you say, God blessed us. They built something here. And God destroyed it. God diversed them. God wasn't it. They wanted to get to heaven. Just because the church has a building program does not mean God's in it. He may, he may not. Daniel. Daniel. Chapter 4. Verse 30. King Nebuchadnezzar's thing. Is not this great Babylon... I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power, for the honor of my majesty. Isn't this a great church? Don't we have a great altar? Don't we have a great pastor? We got great people. We got great deacon. We got great worship. Oh, Lord God, come into your house and bless our house. You sound like Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. And a lot of the Babylonian garbage Ministry, religion is in the churches today, including the Baptist church. This is pride. This is arrogance. This is proud. And God will rebuke Nebuchadnezzar and turn him into the human lawnmower. I meant in many churches, there's pride. The pastor's got pride. The congregation's got pride. Both pastor and the congregation's got pride. Is it? I, mean, I was told when I was in school that, you know, when you get visit to another church, first thing they're going to want you to do is go see the church building. Yeah. Okay. So when we came down here to visit Florida the first time, we were brought down here by a church. And I swear, it was 10 or 11 o'clock at night. We come in from our flight into Orlando. The pastor picks us up, and we had to go visit the storefront church. We went in there, and he turns the lights on. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's a, okay. It's got a platform, it's got a, uh, a, a podium, got a piano, it's got seats, got a toilet. Can I go to my room now and take a nap, sleep? I'm tired. This is not very what. And that church folded. Within time. Move on to chapter 5. Now watch this. Now the great, this is the great Babylonian Empire. Belshazzar, while he tasted wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver vessels of his father Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the kings, the princes, his wives, concubines might drink there. There's a whole congregation. They're meeting together and they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God. And they drank wine, verse 4, and praised the gods of gold, silver, brass, iron, wood, and so So, you know, we got the, we got the items of God. 
We got an altar table. We got an altar. We got a podium. We got a hymnal. Some churches don't have a hymnal. Some churches don't have a podium. I can tell you right now, a church, a Baptist church, pastor doesn't even bring his Bible. Doesn't even wear a suit. But we got the items of God. See how godly we are? We got we got a steeple, we got a cross. Come down here. Verse 30, in the night thou sayest the king of the Chaldeans was you know, in one night your whole church could be destroyed. One night your pastor could die. I know people who would leave God, leave the ministry because their pastor died or their pastor moved away. That's not God. I know people get all upset. I, I had a church with me. They just built this new church. And one of his goonies, one of his cliques, who, whose daughter likes to chew gum and spit it out wherever she feels like it, I accidentally stepped in the gum not knowing. And from the front of the church all the way up to the front, I tracked this, this bubble gum that was attached to my shoe. And I got gum wads on the carpet. Oh, the pastor's wife sitting there scrubbing. Oh, oh how bad I was. It's the stepping gum. What about the person that spit it out? There are people who get in fights because of the color of the carpet. There are people who play the piano and get in fights at church because they didn't get to play the piano that week. We got great. God wasn't in Babylon. God destroyed Babylon. God wasn't in Babel. He came down and dispersed Babel. Matthew 26. Some of the churches that I'm in, Matthew 26, 14. God's working. No, not, not with the things you do. I, I know one church, they got a deacon. He doesn't have any children, he's never had any children. Uh, you didn't read the qualifications of the deacon. He must be the husband of one wife and have his children, uh, I forget what the verse is, in 2 Timothy, in order and subjection. The Southern Baptist Church is moving to, ordain, they got ordained women. Purpose Driven Life, or whatever that guy's name. His church is ordained women, and he's in the Southern Baptist. They got pastors and, and people in the ministry involved in sexual crimes. It's okay, just sleeping under, oh, we're sorry, we got caught. Matthew 26, 14, then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot. One of the twelve disciples <coughs> of Jesus Christ went unto the chief priests, the enemies of Jesus Christ, and said unto them, What will you give me? I will deliver him unto you, Jesus. And they coveted with him thirty pieces of silver. Judas was given thirty pieces of silver by the enemies of God, the enemies of Jesus. You know, the money that goes in your offering plate may not be of God. It may be of the devil. Somebody goes out and, and, and you know, gambles, whatever form of gander, and they put the money from their gambling. You're not to gamble. I had a church, a known prostitute. Was she putting their money into play? The price of a whore? Um, hey, I'm not may not be talking about your church. Amen. But the money that goes into your plate may not all be of God. And the money that comes out of that plate may not all be for God.
Revelation. Three. Seventeen. This is the lad to see in church age. Because that was says, I'm rich. That's what the church is saying. We're rich. We're great. Look at how wonderful we are. Increase with good. Oh, look at the baptistry. Look, look, look at the altar. Look at the pulpit. Look at all the seats. Look at the hymnal book. Look at all the congregation. Look at all the deacons we have. Look, we got a pastor. We got an associate pastor. We got an associate to the associate pastor. We got an associate to the associate to the associate pastor. Oh, we got the worship team. We, we got directors. We got classrooms. We got there. Look how great we are. And have need of nothing. We're a great, wonderful church. This is what God, Jesus Christ, says. And knowest not that thou art wretched. A lot of your churches today are wretched. Though they won't admit it. Miserable. You don't know what that great, wonderful pastor is in his private life. That guy may be taking medication, prescription medication, or non-prescription medication, because his life is just so deceiving everybody. He says, unhappy. You don't know, do you? You're poor. Well, you know, we, we, yeah, but you're not having a heavenly bank account. It's not the bank account that goes in the earth. It's the bank account that goes in heaven, gold, silver, precious stone. We'll look in a minute. You're blind. You don't even know you're sinning. You don't even know God's not there. And naked. You're naked. You're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That's written to the Laodicean church age. This present church age now. Look at here. Verse 20. I stand at the door and knock. This is the only place in the Bible where the church is described as a building. Other places the church is described as people. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. Why does Jesus say, I will come in? Because he's not in the church. There are churches today, including Baptist churches. Jesus Christ is not inside that church. You may think he is. But you got to be forewarned because Paul tells us that there's another Jesus. There's another gospel. And there's another spirit. You may have another Jesus in your church thinking it is Jesus. You got. You may have another gospel. What's another gospel? Oh, come to church. Will you come to church? You come to church. Come to church Sunday. Come to church Easter. Come to church Christmas. Will you come to my church? No, the gospel is that we're told to go in the world and preach the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is what we're to preach. Nowhere do you find the scriptures come to church. All are welcome. And they come to church. One, two, three, four, five, six. We had six in our church. How many did you have? How about Jesus Christ is standing outside my church and he won't come in unless somebody comes out? You don't believe me? 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 11. 14. And no marvel. Don't you marvel over this. For Satan himself is transformed an angel of light. I've seen a light. I died and I saw the light. I saw this angel. He had big fluffy wings. And she told me... and. That could be Satan. Because the angels in the Bible are males and they don't have wings. And they're in no way associated with the Catholic Church. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers, his ministers, whose ministers? Verse 14, Satan. Also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. They look right. They talk right. They act right, but they are ministers, they are pastors, they are Sunday school teachers of Satan. And you may have one or two or many in your church. 
Don't you think because every pastor is going to heaven, every Sunday school teacher is going to heaven? Don't you dare think that. I can think of some Sunday school teachers right now, very questionable. I can think of some pastors, very questionable. But you need to realize that there are men out there, they're not of God, they're of Satan. Like that money may not be of God, maybe of the devil. That building program may be of the world and not God. And the first great step to know about my church, and we're so proud and so arrogant. That's one side. Because the devil is the king of the children of pride. There's pride. In you. And, and you know what? These churches, they don't even see their pride. They don't even know they're proud. Because they're so arrogant. They've so been deceived. Remember, Jesus Christ is knocking outside the church. Inside is Satan saying, hey Amen, great music. Woohoo, we got a beat to that. Man, if your butt and your hands and your feet are jibbing to the music, you got the wrong music, my friend. If your music is jazzy, the wrong music, my friend. Satan. Contemporary music is of Satan. Bluegrass music <coughs> is of Satan. Well, you see, you cough. You know, God wants you to be interrupted. I cough all the time. You just don't want to hear what you like. See, the problem is what you like may not be what God likes. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 3. Verse 12. Now if any man build on the foundation gold, silver, precious stone, those are reward. Those are well done. Now every Christian is going to have wood, hay, and stubble. Not every Christian is going to have gold, silver, and precious stone. There are churches Groups of people, they won't have gold and silver for precious stones. They'll mount up wood, hay, and stubble. When it's put to the fire, wood, hay, and stubble burns, ashes, a loss, no crowns, no rewards, no inheritance. What is you and your church? We're all going to have wood, hay, and stubble. But is there any gold, silver, and precious stone in your church? You better get down on your knees. You better seek God and get God and find out it's God. Make sure you try that spirit. Then make sure it's God. And one thing, if your church has got Easter, if it's got paganism, it allows the sodomites in. It's got a woman pastor. That's wrong. That's not God. He's outside the door. If your pastor and your church is full of pride and they're proud, that's not God. Satan's there. He's outside the door. Jesus is outside the door. Look at 1 Corinthians 3. Oh, verse 3. Ye are carnal. You know there's some churches that have carnals, carnivals? Oh, there's nothing wrong with having a carnival. Ye are carnal. Where do you think the, the word came from? Whereas there's envy. Well, they didn't get to play the piano. Strife. It's my scene. Division. Well, this is our favorite pastor. Well, I like this pastor. I like this Sunday school. I don't like that Sunday school. I don't like him. I don't know why she always brings that dish to the fellowship. You are not carnal? Are you not carnal? And walk as men? If your church has got envy, strife, and division, openly, outwardly, you got the wrong Bible. If your church is not King James, right there, Satan's in the side, Jesus Christ is outside. You can pray for all the revivals you want. You ain't going to get one. 
You get to pray for all the churches you pass by. Oh, no, don't you pray for the Catholics. They've killed Christians. They killed Christians over the, over the Bible. Fox's Book of Martyrs. I'll pray for Catholics, but I ain't praying for that church. They're not a church. Because the definition of the church is the body of believers. Their assemblies, Pentecostal assembly, Catholic assembly. You're only in the church if you're in the church by the blood of Jesus. Many people meet together, they're not under the blood of Jesus. They're assembly. You don't even know what the word church is. Carnal. They're carnal. Romans. Romans. 8-7. Because the carnal mind, let's get a rock band, let's dress casual, let's bring everybody in, up in Connecticut, there are churches every year, you can bring your pet and get your pet blessed. In one of the prisons where I preach that, you go into, and they got the symbol of all the religions in the room. Carnal. You can't preach against that religion. I can't believe you stand out there in the street and you preach. You're turning people away. Judge not. You like my Easter dress? I just bought it for Easter. Isn't our preacher great? We're going to take up money for our preacher and get him a big gift. You know every Bible, every birthday in the Bible someone died? And yet your church does not celebrate the new birth? I wouldn't get, if your church doesn't have a Sunday night or Wednesday night service, I wouldn't be on your pastor. Are you paying him for three nights or two nights? And he's only working one or two? The carnal minded is death. Well, that's wages of sin to death. Verse 6. But the spiritual mind is life and peace. You can be carnal and not be spiritual. But you can be carnal and act and pretend to be spiritual. That's a pretender. That's a deceiver. That's Satan. Because the carnal mind is enmity, hatred, war against God. So they, verse 8, that are in the flesh cannot please God. Does your music in your church make you tap your foot, beat your hand, snap your finger, cut your feet? Oh, that's flesh. That does not please God. You got Satan in the church and Jesus is outside. You can have events in a building called a church. And you could get the money. You can get the buildings. You can get the materials. You can get whatever you need to labor. Everything you need. And you can build it. Like they did in Babel. God wasn't in it. And God came in and broke it up. Now listen. If you got a King James Bible believing church. Christ centered. Praying. Repenting church. Out evangelizing. Telling people the gospel. You're trying to do right. Alright you got the Lord. You got a wonderful great church. Not all churches like that. God may break that up. God may say, hey, why don't you publicize the sexual hidden reports of that church? Why don't you make public about that pastor having sex with a 16-year-old in his office? Why don't you make public that that church has been embezzling money from their people? God will get you. 
How do you know you, you got a carnal church? If God opens up the door and you're found to be naked. And your practice is pretty much against the law. Bingo. And you got a church. Oh, we got a great pastor. We got a great church. <laughs> Look at everything in the past. Oh, I got wonderful great children. I got a great congregation. Oh, great, 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 great. Isn't Babylon just so great? Pride. We got an altar. We got a pulpit. We got a piano. We got the pews. Hey, look. COVID-19. The rapture may destroy your work overnight. Listen, at the judgment seat of Christ, we'll know, Pastor, who and what you are. We'll know, Stiley, at the judgment seat of Christ, who and what you are. Christian, we will know who you are at the judgment seat of Christ. At the rapture, we'll know if you're saved or not. We'll know everything about Christianity and the Christian at the rapture in the judgment seat of Christ. Not all pastors are going to show up at the judgment seat of Christ. They'll be at the great white judgment. Not all people who go to church are going to be at the judgment seat of Christ. They'll be at the great white throne. That money that goes in that offering pay may be filthy. It may be vile. And they make those that, those that know that money is filthy and vile, they just may look the other way because, you know, we need the money. Who cares where it came from? I've heard of one church, I think I was in school, we were told, that the pastor learned that the money was coming from a person who owned the package store. I was told that he got the treasurer say, you tell me how much money that guy is giving. And the check was written out for the full amount. Went back to that guy and said, we're not taking your money. Drinking is against the Bible. It's filthy. Filthy liqueur. And as a pastor, I am not to be involved in filthy liqueur. That's something, that's a godly man. How about what your church is doing with the money? All that money doesn't always go to godly things. All your missionaries not may not be missionaries of God. They may be missionaries of the world. We were in the church and they filled a shoebox. My wife and I said, oh, cool. We grabbed a shoe, couple shoeboxes. We put, you know, the crayons and stuff. We put little tiny Bibles in them. And we were rebuked. You can't put that in there. You can't put those gospel tracts in there. Why not? That's not allowed. They won't send them to the kids. Oh, because the country won't? No, no, the country. We just don't do that here. All right. Not getting none of my money no more. Great Babylon. We got the things that look like God. We got the building program. It wasn't God. The money that came into the wasn't God. That man in the pulpit, that preacher, that Sunday school teacher, he may not be of God. He may be Satan. Something to think about. You're taking for granted. Our church is going to have a carnival. We're going to have VBS. We're going to have. We're, we're, going, we're going to count the kids' heads. We're going to have playground. We're going to have sandwiches and snacks. We're going to have uh, crafts. We're going to have a puppet show. We're going to have all kinds of entertainment. What about Bible study? Yeah, we'll do that afterwards. I worked in two, B, two BVSs. Ten minutes 
counting heads, 10 minute snacks, 15 minute lunch, 15 minutes arts and craft, 10 minutes go outside on the slide or the swings, whatever you earn, 15 minutes A team versus B team or red team versus blue team. We get a 10 minute non Bibles, kind of Bible centered story of Billy and his boat. And then we got five minute Bible using an NIV Bible. Then we count heads again, we send them home. That was two BBSs in one church we were in. You better ask God, my church, Lord, where does it stand? Lord, where do I stand as a Christian? Am I even a Christian? Lord, at the point of my life right now, will I hear, well done? Lord, is my pastor correct? Is he of you? Our missionaries, are they of you? Our Sunday school teacher, is he of you? Lord, why are they using a new King James? Why are they using an ASV? Why are we not King James? Why is the language of our pastor strange and weird in the Greek, in the Hebrew, a better rendering? It doesn't match my King James Bible. What is going on? Why does our music make me want to dance? What's going on? Why are the lights flickering different colors? Why do I get a headache listening to the worship leader? Why do we not have a team of people going out trying to tell people about Jesus? Where's the track rack? Where's the Sunday evening service? Where's the Wednesday evening service? Why do we got more people at the fellowship than we did at the service? That's another thing we... I've always known, my wife Lisa knows that. When we were at the first church, she came up to me one time and we would have church and then fellowship afterwards. And she says, you know, there looks like a whole lot more people here for the fellowship than there was in the church service. Yeah, I know. So the, the, the idea comes to the thing is I'm not saying all churches are bad but I'm not saying all churches are good on a scale of 1 to 10 10 being the holiest of all 10 is the one the saints have gone on to glory some churches are 7 possibly 8 some are a 3 or 4 some churches don't even make the scale. And I'm talking about Baptist churches. Never mind the Catholic. Never mind the Presbyterian. There are, Catholic, there are Baptist churches. I call them Baptist Catholic. There are Catholic church traditions with a Baptist foundation. With a bunch of goats. And some sheep that are starving to death. 